Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in and get comfy. I am grateful to be back for another segment of the Business Bootcamp series presented by Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated and Comerica Bank. I'll start by acknowledging that COVID-19 affected communities across the globe. And after having to cancel several of our own annual signature events, we spoke with our friends at Comerica Bank to identify what our next steps to make an impact would be. In 2020, we decided to put together 12 business workshops on various topics that would equip entrepreneurs, small business owners, and nonprofit leaders in order to do our part for economic sustainability. Our goal is to educate and equip business owners and leadership professionals with the strategies and resources that you can apply to your business immediately. It's important that we remain proactive in increasing access to tangible knowledge and developing professional skills as we begin to figure out how to navigate this post-COVID world together. And I am your host, A. Margot Blair, leadership development consultant and founder of Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit organization headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona. We would, in our vision at Discover Her is designed to bridge generational gaps between diverse groups of women. And pre-Rona, we would do this through in-person, professional, and personal development experiences, such as conferences, training, seminars. As we navigate this post-COVID world at Discover Her, we are cultivating virtual experiences such as this to teach the fundamentals that may have been missed, to equip leaders with actionable steps that you could apply to your business and life immediately, and to grow our professional networks. And I would be completely remiss if I didn't welcome and thank the person but the in company behind the yes of bringing this vision to life, Summer Fawcett, who is the National African American Business Development Manager for Comerica Bank. Summer, it is so great to see you again and have you a part of this vision. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much, Margo. Yeah, sorry for my, I'm using my phone and my backdrop is um, a hotel, but we're going to have to work with it today. You look great. You um, look great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, we're so excited to be here. Um, thank you again for hosting this. The Comerica Business Sense is almost like a kickoff of a lot of our Sense programs that are meant for businesses, um, Black businesses, nonprofit businesses, uh, Latino and like Latinx businesses. I mean, there's just so many businesses out there that need the information and need it given in their own way. Um, and it's good to see people who look like us who do the things that we do to understand. And sometimes things just, tri you know, trigger you and click. You're like, oh, I get it now, especially for all the steps that are needed in business. Somebody could tell me all the thousand steps that are needed for business, but I'm going to retain, you know, 5% of that. So we have to hear it over and over and over again, because we are in the school of business. We have to understand that we're not, um, we can't do everything. We have to learn how to, how to, you know, set it aside. But the, the information being taught is um, at a level and all the people and all the speakers that you have come in here, they're at levels that are far beyond some of the courses you can take at any college. So it's an exciting adventure. And I thank you again so much for hosting it. This is our businesses program. I love it. I'm going to keep this on repeat. We're going to rewind every single year if possible because it reaches so many people. And it's just an amazing opportunity um, to also connect with the community, see what they're doing, and then see how the bank can grow. We, we, all the information we get from you, we apply to ourselves and who we get for the what we get from the community. We kind of take a look at ourselves and say, you know, are we doing this particular program right or product right to meet the needs of the community? So again, thank you so much. Happy to be here. I'll be on camera a couple times and I'm gonna be off camera a couple times. So um, but if you need anything, I am right here. <laughs> thank you again so much, Summer. You you have been super pivot, paramount to everything that we're doing here. And the, the reality is, Summer said, we've been impacting so many people. 
the the boot camp sense is not just with what we're doing in partnership with Discover Her and Comerica. There are several other organizations that are on this movement, but through the partnership with Discover Her and Comerica, I will say because I'm pretty proud of this, we have served over twenty. We have reached over twenty thousand people. 20,000, like I'm saying this for the record, because again, what we're teaching and what we're talking about, you're going to be paying thousands uh, upon hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm bringing subject matter experts, some of whom are my friends and I know they know their stuff, but you're not gonna get this information anywhere without paying for it. So come on in, bring a friend, tell a friend, and let us dive in. So once again, thank you, Comerica. We are so grateful to have you a part of this vision. Now, um, before we dive into today's segment, I see we have some few first-time boot camp attendees, so welcome. I want to be sure to set the stage so that you know what to expect during our time together for the next hour, hour and a half. Um, so let's go over some housekeeping. So we want to invite you to be an active participant in this discussion. But what is it? what exactly does that look like? Um, number one, be sure that you have your notes notepad and your pen. This the, the, the beautiful individual who is joining us today, she is going to give you tons of valuable information and you will want to be sure that you have your pen at the ready. So grab that. If you don't have it, run <laughs> as I'm finishing up things housekeeping. Um, as well, when you hear something that resonates with you or that speaks with you, let us know in the comments. When you talk, we talk back. If you'd like for one of us to provide additional clarity or a deeper example, just ask us. Go ahead and jump in the comments and let us know and we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and then we will have a final call for questions at the end. So again, be sure to drop those questions in the comments and then my team and I will do our best to get your questions answered. Um, we always encourage you to share the message. If you're with us, tell people about it. If you're live with us on the social media, go ahead and just share the link um, and tell people why they should come just in order for us to continue to expand this message out there. Um, tag us in any quotables, make sure you give credit where it's due, and the major takeaways that you receive from this discussion. You will be using the hashtag Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp Series. Yes, it's long, but it's worth it. It helps us find you when you are going ahead and posting your commentary. So definitely use that hashtag. And then also, we want to take another moment to just thank each of you for joining us because you could be anywhere else in the world, but you are here with us to learn, to grow, and to prepare to make a greater impact in the lives of those you are called to lead. Now let's dive in. So I am so excited for today's conversation I have some really special people with me today. You met Summer already, but I want to take a second to just say today's discussion is on the topic of mic drop moments, the art of public speaking. And this goes in hand with the theme for this bootcamp series that we have, which is developing women leaders of impact. And we've had discussions on mental health and entrepreneurship, courageous conversations that convert. So we were talking about making money, honey. <laughs> we were talking about owning your financial narrative, certifying your business, upscaling your marketing, the power of SEO, and the list goes on. And so as we're landing the plane for this second series of the boot camp, we wanted to bring another dynamic conversation. And again, this topic is mic drop moments, the art of public speaking. And the second person, no, one of the first people that came to my mind was my really great friend, Shahara Downing. She is a coach and the CEO of Levelcom LLC. And I say she's also a comedian, but she is, her, Shahara's mission is to make human interaction effortless. And she does this from panels to podcasts, conference keynotes, to crucial conversations. She helps professionals develop speaking skills that create mic drop worthy moments. You see where we're going, right? 
you're dynamic and she's dynamic and the way like, it's really important to understand this she believes that you are dynamic and the way you speak should be too and so we are so excited to welcome Shahara to this conversation it's so great to be back making an impact and delivering value in the same room as you how are you sis Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good day to everybody that's in the house, Narisha, Tanika, uh, Ashley, Ashley, right? Uh, and everybody else that's uh, joining us, I think you said it's on Facebook we're streaming. Yep. So everybody who's Dude, out Facebook, there. everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, uh, and the internet streets. Uh, yeah. Good day, and I'm excited to join you all. Thank you again. So once again, today, the conversation will center on the art of speaking. We will discuss how to make an impact through speaking, storytelling, sharpening your speaker skills, and debunking the myth that only confident people speak well. And so we'll start off with some high-level questions and then dive deeper into the art, business, and strategy behind speaking. So I'll just let us kick it off. Shahara, tell us, why is speaking important? Super simple question, what, but, but so deep. Why is speaking important for a business leader? Um, you know, the first thing that I'm gonna say is it's, it's most important because um, no one's going to advocate for you like you are going to advocate for you. Ooh. And if you have any doubt, insecurity, apprehension, um, any resistance or hesitation towards opening up your mouth and speaking on your own behalf, then you are in trouble, trouble, right? And so you have to find that this, your mouthpiece and the way that you communicate, the way that you express yourself, the way that you articulate your thoughts, it is a gift to you so that you can excel, so mm. that you can put yourself in the places that you wanna be. Um, Public speaking just for that, even if it is just to advocate for yourself, whether it is at work, whether it's at home, whether it's communicating boundaries, whether it's for asking for the things that you need or even just asking for the things that you want, your public speaking skills need to be on point because you live with yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know that there's something out there that you want. So I want you to think about it and I want you to say, okay, at the end of this conversation, I wanna see y'all in the chat. I see Tanika's in the chat. I want you to say, Shahara, this is what I want. Shahara, this is what I'm asking for. And I want you to keep that top of mind because your public speaking skills and your ability to ask and voice and, and communicate value and worth is going to be the thing that helps you get those things that you want. That's it. That is so spot on. And I love that you're talking about the power that we have as individuals to use our voices, even if we don't necessarily know how to do that, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but there's some, this power that we have to make an impact. So let's walk that out a little bit. How exactly do we make an impact through public speaking? Yeah, and, and public speaking is the vehicle, Ooh. right? Like you can have an impact if you work for a, um, in, on a marketing department, right? Like that's a vehicle for getting the message out. You know, um, the, these workshops, this is a vehicle for having impact. Um, volunteering, that's a vehicle for impact. Um, everything that you do becomes the vehicle for how you affect the lives of the people around you. And so, but the most commonly used vehicle are your speaking skills. The vehicle that communicates and connects the world, it's through mostly verbal, right? Like the way that we communicate for centuries, 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 and centuries, it's always been verbal. Like we send a lot of emails, we, we do in, uh, you know, we send text messages, we be in people's DMs and whatnot, but the verbal exchange is the vehicle. So if you're looking at the impact that you want to have at work, in your community, in your family, start to look at the vehicle of speaking 
to be able to have that impact. So when you're looking at impact, you have to ask yourself, what are the things that I'm saying that resonate with the people who are listening to me? And if I'm sharing something that resonates, if I'm sharing something that's a solution, that's a resolution, that's a resource, if I'm sharing something through my words that serves someone else, then you have impact. It's like, boom, impact, it happens. But public speaking is just the vehicle, one vehicle that you can use in order to have impact uh, with the people around you. I love that. The line that you just shared or said was share something that resonates, that makes an impact or that provides a resolution. That is so, so key. So as we're talking about this, I want to dive deeper in just even to that point. So there's this myth out there that only confident people speak well. What is your response to this? So I am here, my mission, and, and if y'all haven't written down your values, if you don't have a vision statement or like kind of like a mission statement, I would say you got to do that. Um, Tanika's in the house and she knows me through these internet streets. She, she's from Maryland, but she worked at Under Armour and I uh, facilitated an event for the Executive Leadership Council last year and she's been following me since. So I don't know if that was one of the sessions, but I know Tanika, we probably talked about values. We talked about how that's our, our North Star. So my, my mission statement is, um, you know, to make human interaction and connection. And I just added connection because that's what leads me now, effortless. How many times do we roll up in places and be having conversations with people and the conversation ain't effortless? How many times do we struggle with small talk? How many times do we have a hard time advocating for ourselves? How many times do we have a difficulty advocating for other people? We should not be struggling to interact and connect with the people around us because that's the way that things get done. So I say that because it's not your, it's not having this charismatic, bubbly, um, you know, the prototypical type of personality to be a great speaker. I believe that being a great speaker is rooted in connection and how willing are you showing up to connect with the people around you? If you got a dry personality, if you are in, uh, an introvert, if you are shy, if you have a stutter, if you have um, you know, other insecurities that lead you to believe that you can't be a powerful speaker, I want you to go ahead and swipe left on that. And if y'all know these apps, you know, swipe and left mean that ain't for you. I want you to swipe left on that. And I want you to understand that rooted behind charisma, charm, personality, X factor, and je ne sais quoi is really connection. So how are you connecting with the people around you? Are you interested in real connection? Because there are a lot of people who got great personalities and they ain't really worried about these people. And those are the people that we don't really be thinking about. We'd be like, oh, I don't, you just don't be feeling them, even though they have a great personality, even though they're you know, entertaining to look at, but you don't be feeling them. Why? Because their, their, their willingness to connect isn't genuine. So if you believe that you don't have the personality or the charisma or the charm or whatever to be a great speaker, swipe left on it and sit in the space of how can I connect with the people around me? Connection supersedes personality. Again, that's such a really great point. And I want to I want to say something to this point of the connection. Um, and, and you also mentioned your values and your missions. For me, one of the things that I teach my clients and students is understanding how to leverage your professional assets. Now, professional assets is not a common term that is used. And so for us, trademark. Um, no, but for us, professional assets are really leveraging your expertise, both professional and personal experiences. And so as Shahar is talking about, you know, create your, you know, identify your values and, and really map out your mission statement when you are looking for, to speak. And again, just to reiterate, and again, we'll dive into this a little bit later, but the public speaking is just not keynoting from a stage. Like, let me be very clear. And so wherever you are in your career or your business, 
that is your stage. That is your platform. And so leverage your professional assets, identify your values so that you can create a clear mission statement that allows you to speak to the people you are called to serve and lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and we did that there. Go ahead. You, you said it absolutely right. And I want you all to also consider, because here's something that may happen to people, right? It, it, someone gives you the microphone and now all eyes are on you. Uh, you're in a meeting and then uh, all attention is diverted to you because people want to you know, get your opinion, right? Or you interject because you're like, I've got something to offer. Um, or maybe even in some of these formal capacities where you're joining spaces like this, where you're speaking, or you know, it's time to stand up at a conference and ask a question and then your arms start sweating and then you get nervous and then you lose your thought and then you sit down and you'd be like, oh, I should have said this. Oh, I forgot to say that right? So we know that this happens, but I want you to know that if you shift your perspective and you look at every single time that you open up your mouth, you are public speaking, you're going to be practicing every single day. Every time you open up your mouth and someone else is listening, not just yourself, because we do talk to ourselves, but anytime you open up your mouth and someone is listening, you are public speaking. So that stage does not have to be in an auditorium. That stage doesn't have to be behind a podium. That stage doesn't have to even have a microphone. That stage sometimes are the conversations that you have on a day-to-day -day basis. And challenge yourself to show up in those conversations as if you doing a TED talk, as if you are uh, testifying to the church, right? Because I know we all been there too. Easter Sunday, our speeches, okay? so. It's, it's finding that balance between, you know, how you perceive formal public speaking mm -hmm. and now how you invite this idea that every time I open up my mouth, there, a, a stage comes right underneath me. Yep. Every time I get ready to speak, magically a microphone just comes to my mouth. You know, like that's how epic your voice is. And once you get into practice of thinking about some of these casual conversations, but knowing that what you say can make them crucial conversations, you'll be public speaking more often and then you'll be more in practice. So then you won't feel some of that nervousness. I see the chat going off like, mm, that's good. That's me, Tamika. We see you. We hear you. We were there too. And I want us to talk about that before we dive deeper um, into the art, um, the business and, and strategies behind speaking. Um, have you always been this bold? Have you always just, you, you seem like you have it together, you, you know? So when you take the stage, does it like, it's always been effortless for you, right? You hear the, sarca the sarcasm in my voice. But but it's so funny that you like, I, I see that you got it together, but behind here, I have like a month worth of clothes piled up and I have not hung them up. Uh, this past weekend, I like I fell on a table. I'm just being real honest, girl. It was crazy. That's a whole nother story. Okay, I may share it on my Instagram stories. So no, I may see I, I have it together, but I also I come undone. Uh, but here's the thing: I want you all to kind of take a moment, and I want you to think back, maybe even going all the way back to childhood. And I I share the story of uh, when I was in fifth grade. I was invited by my teachers and my principal to uh, go through a conflict management training in fifth grade. And wow. we went through conflict management training. We were called the Maywood Mediators. We were given a sash and a clipboard that guides us through conflict management. We were ushered onto the playground, basically to squash beef amongst third, fourth, and fifth graders. <laughs> First graders, I don't know if they were on our playground, but. So I say that because very early on, I was given permission. Mm. I was given permission to speak. I was given permission to lead. I was given permission to get up in other people's business. I was given permission to initiate. And it happened all the way then. And, but that's not everybody's story. Some right. people weren't given permission. Some people were told no. Some people were saying that's not your place. And I know in the black community, how many times as a child that we say, stay out of grown folk business, this is not right. your place, only spoke when spoken to. There's a better way to cultivate, um, you know, young black children's voices, but still keeping the respect in there. You know, you're not just gonna talk any type of way, but 
many times our voices are squashed before we have an opportunity to really cultivate them. So for me, I say the reason why I show up the way that I did today or I do today is because I was given permission pretty early. Mm. So, so yes, y'all, I am that person that's been talking my whole life. Okay. Like I did plays. I was, I did the church announcements in high school. I did the uh, announcements over the PA in the morning in college. I was hosting everybody's event. It didn't matter if you was a Delta, AKA a Sigma Alpha Kappa or whoever I was hosting everybody's events. It, It is a, it is a gift, but I will tell you this. When I finished college, I realized I had talent and then I had to decide to make that talent more. And I decided to make it a skill. So I studied, I practiced, I learned, I I improved. I did not just sit on the fact that I have talent. So what you see today is God given, but the spaces and the places that I'm able to show up and the way that I'm able to serve people is not because I have talent, but because I developed a skill and I continue to hone on that skill. Again, so many gems that were in that story. And thank you for being transparent and vulnerable, right? Because when we get to, I'll call it status, when we get to a certain place, again, whether it's career or business, um, people who are steps behind, and that's in quotes, but steps behind us, they see, they, they kind of, there's this like rose colored glasses th- through the lens in which they see us. And so I wanted to, you know, make us human and just, you know, give that realization that we've all had different experiences along our journeys. And, you know, I have stories for days. And so I also want to share that I had been speaking for years. I have been a talker since I was a kid. And I was being, I was told as a kid that I was going to be a lawyer one day because I had a little bit of bite and bark. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but you know, leadership development consultant is a little bit close to that, I guess. Some, no, not at all. But anyway, one, one particular moment that I like to share in these particular scenarios, again, to keep everyone grounded is I had been speaking for years, but one day. I got an opportunity to participate in a storytelling event and I was so excited. I was, I was going to tell this story and I was sitting on stage in front of 300,000 people and I forgot the words and I'm sitting here like, Lord, I freestyle all of my speeches up until this point, I freestyle all of my speeches and to make matters worse, this story wasn't on a subject expert topic. It was my personal story. Oh, girl. And I forgot my words. Oh, girl. And so I'm sitting here like, okay, what do I do? I have two options. One, to run out of the room. Dang, I can't do that because the exit is running past all 300 people. I will likely trip and fall. That's my story. And so I said, okay, so I'm not going to do that. I said, I need to figure out how to, how to say what I'm trying to say. I said, okay, so I also can do, so I'm not going to run out. What I can also do is just wow them. I can, I can do some empowerment speech that is completely disrespecting the host of this event, but I'm going to, I got my Margo sauce, so I can do that. I said, absolutely not. You were invited to this, show some respect. And then in that moment, when I stood in integrity, I remembered that I had my notes in my pocket. <laughs> I never have notes and let alone have them in my pocket. And so I said, hold on one moment, everyone. Pulled the notes out of my pocket. I said, ah, here I was. And then I just delivered the message, standing ovation. It was great. I sweated, you know, so I sweat through my shirt, but <laughs> nonetheless, the experience was great. And you know, the feedback was great, but I know for me, I had never had that experience. Like I said, I had been a professional speaker for years. I was traumatized, but I had to finish what I started. The point of me even telling this story was number one, you know, hearing Shahara talk about her experience and she's always been a speaker. Same thing for me. This was an experience that could have shifted the trajectory of even what's happening here. This was about three years ago now, but yet I'm on this stage facilitating this conversation with the speaker coach or communication coach and my corporate partner. So I got, I got some stuff together as well. I had to look at some things. So my 
what I want you to take away from my story, as well as Shahara's story, is understand that you are going to have different moments in your life, but you don't have to allow those moments to define you. Good moments, bad moments, and things in between. And so I think my story is a really great segue to the next question that I want us to talk about. I want us to, again, go ahead and, and talk a little bit about the art, the business, and some strategies behind speaking, because I think that's why they're here, right? Like, they, did, they didn't care about my story, but <laughs> they, they want to know about the tips. So let's let's go ahead here. Um, I want you to talk about the science or psychology, rather, behind storytelling. Ooh. Okay. So it, it, to, to summarize the previous stories that we told, I'm going to put in the chat a quote that I, I, I guess I created it, but vulnerability is the quickest way to connection. Do not take the detour. The more that you can be vulnerable, the quicker you can make connection with people. Okay. Like literally I say that the most embarrassing things that have happened to you in the, in, in your life, the things that are the most unsavory are the things that connect with people. It, and I'm just, we got a room full of women. I, I don't know who all in the internet streets, you know, but when you come to peace with the dark parts of yourself and then you can share that, people see the light in you because you found some healing. Uh, when I talked about, I fell on this table, y'all, it is, it is not a good reason why I fell on this table, but I'm transitioning. I'm 36 and I'm getting older and I can't do the same things I used to do. That's all I'm saying. So when cash money records taken over for the nine, nine and 2000, come on, I can't react the same way that I did 10 years ago. So I say that because I want you to consider, and here's a tip. Here's, if you want a tip, consider the things within you that are creating resistance that you're hiding that still hurts you, that creates insecurity, that you distrust, that, that um, create hesitation, the things that you have doubt, those things are the very first things that you need to deal with, that you need to find peace with. Um, not to say that they're not gonna hurt you, not to say that it's still not gonna be embarrassing, not to say that you, you, know, you don't wanna just shout it from the mountaintop, but the more at peace you come with those things, the more that you show up, the more that people can receive of you, the quicker people trust you. It, it's, it's something about not hiding anything. And I know that black women, we, we have this thing at work where we don't need Becky to be all up in our business. We don't need them to know exactly what we're doing in our off time. And, and no, we're not trying to be a part of the boys club. And no, we're not trying to, you know, like, there's, there's a fine line that we walk in balancing our authenticity. But most times we still have not dealt with the authentic parts of ourselves first. So the tip, whatever you are struggling with sis and brother, if you out there, deal with it. Journal, I have this thing called PMRJ. It's called prayer, meditating, reading and journaling. And that is the research of yourself, put in the chat. PMRJ is the research of yourself. And, and the more acquainted you get with yourself, when you show up and speak, whether you realize it or not, your, your, your energy is emanating something more than just the personality. It's emanating something more than just the performance. You're showing up as a real person. And if you ain't got nothing to hide, then that's where the essence of authenticity is communicated. So that's a tip, PMRJ. And Margot put it in the chat, consider the things that you are creating resistance, hesitation, doubt, et cetera, like deal with those things. And then when you feel, when you feel ready, share it with somebody that you're not like, that's not your best friend. Share it at a networking event you know, like be prepared to share something that's tough. Cause I kid you not, 80% of that room will identify with you. And now you're gonna look more confident because you had the courage to share. And now you're gonna connect with people because they see themselves in you. So the next tip that I'm gonna give in the space of storytelling and this is um, 
a quote that I share with a lot of my clients, tell your story in such a way that people think it's their own. Share your story in such a way that people think it's their own. And essentially what I'm saying is, is share the stories sometimes that you don't wanna share. Share the stories that you think are gonna embarrass you. Think, share the stories that are deep and dark. I mean, wherever it's relevant, you know, you don't wanna get all deep in a meeting and talking about what happened to you when you were 16, but you know, but there is a time and a place to share those stories. And when you tell that story, other people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's me. Oh my gosh, that's me. Oh my gosh, that's me. You don't realize how much that meant for me to hear. I don't feel alone. You know, like this is connection. So the only way we can connect is to share of ourselves. So I know that I don't want y'all to think that this is some type of self-help type of thing, but I started to look at what really makes a great speaker. And it ain't about the us, the ums and the us, y'all. Let that go. You know, it's not about this power pose. Now, granted, women, you know, stick your chest out, but I could be slouching the whole time. But if I'm connecting with you, you get it. So the form of public speaking that I teach, that I coach, is called connection sourced public speaking. And it's public speaking that's sourced by reaching for connection, by being available to connect. And how do you do that? You do that through sharing stories that reveal something about yourself. Again, that's so, this is so rich. Um, no pun intended because we're talking about the business of speaking. But one thing that I wanted to just go back to my story that I shared, you know, forgetting my words on stage in front of this audience, this large audience, um, it speaks to what you were just referring to. I had been, and I said a couple key words when I was talking about the story. I had been doing public speaking or professional speaking for years around subject matter, about around my subject matter, um, whether it was overcoming ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, mother-daughter relationships, blah, 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 right? Like that was my subject area for years. Me telling my story was opening up a door that I had kind of had like was able to sleep under the rug because it wasn't front facing. I didn't like everybody didn't need to know that side of me to go and say, hi, I'm this. This is what I do. I'm going to take your stage, speak, deliver impact and go on about everybody's day with my paycheck deposited in my bank account. Right. Like that was one side of it. But telling this story and I want to break this down again, not self-help, but to give this clarity. Um, the topic was hi my name is and for whatever reason i had an obsession as a kid with eminem but you know whatever um and when i was telling this story i went through this process of who am i and i was coming into myself and so i started talking about in a sense this is i'm i'm, I, I'm not going to tell the story but i'm going to say how i broke it down but i talked about how when i was adopted at five days old i didn't have a name and then I went and I identified the name that I was given as an adoptee. And then I talked about how I battled at 14 with so many things and I changed my name and I had a fake name and I went to another city taking a bus there and told people like this name. And then people in that city came to my actual school and were calling me this name. And I was like, ah, this is awkward because my real friends and then these were real friends too, were calling me different names. Like, I went through this story to then end on my name is full name and I landed on the meaning of my name and embracing the name and so me telling that story even though in the beginning I forgot my words and it was a humbling experience for me the reason I got the standing ovation was because that story of identity resonated, said that word earlier, and connected, my vulnerability connected with my audience, men, women across multiple generations, resonated with battling with their identity. Maybe they didn't make up their own name and go to another city, but nonetheless battled with identity. 
And so again, I wanted to just come as you were talking, I was like, ah, I gotta, I gotta put this little cherry on top to tell the back end of the story. Um, mm -hmm. Because again, what we're talking about is so deep and it's beyond just here's some tips, now go get paid. We are talking about what I like to focus on, the person behind the business. Mm -hmm. So as we're gonna be continuing to talk about some actual, some more strategies, these are tips that you want to make sure that you put in your back pocket as you're preparing this to take stages, as you take the stage, and then after you have gotten off the stage to really revisit the impact that was made while you had this mic in your hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Ashley just hit me in the DM. Ashley, if, if you wanna share, uh, copy paste that. Oh, there she goes. She says, how, how it's so important to be transparent and vulnerable. My jaw is open as Margo is sharing. Our story is very similar and that's what it's all about. Y'all, here's the tip, here it is. Margo shared her story. She was vulnerable, she was transparent. It identifies with someone else. It's the story that is the connector. Right, Margo is, is a great speaker, but even beyond that, if she wasn't talking about something that rel that was relevant, that resonated with you, there would not be a there would not be a connection. She'd just be, oh, she was nice. She's a great speaker. Oh yeah, that's good. But no, but that's not impact. Mm. That's not impact. So I want you all to start to see the difference between being a polished, a professional, you know, a, just a pleasant speaker to someone who has impact with their words, with their stories that they're sharing. So if there's any, any tip that we wanna make clear, you know, moving forward, I think I'm calling them out so that y'all can write them down, but you know, don't be afraid to really tell your story. Don't be afraid to share parts of your story when the time presents itself, because that could be the very thing that connects with a person that you've been challenged with connecting with. Again, so good. Don't be afraid to share parts of your story. This is this is another one that's going to drive the the point home as we're talking about what we're, we're talking about. Ashley, I, I see you and I hear you. And um, you know, as we're talking about this, I I want us to go into to to be able to respond to some of the questions that we got from the audience. And I think this is a really good one of how do we break into the speaker industry? Oh. I think that's different than what we've been talking about, yeah. but it's still something that I think we need to touch on as well. How do we break in to the speaker industry? So I'm whoever asked that out in the internet streets, this one's going out to you. Um, to break into the industry, to be um, a paid speaker, first, you know, understand that there's there's different types of speaking. There's motivational speaking, uh, and there's motivational speaking in a number of different aspects. Um, I chose the route to go into speaking based off of a skill set. People tap me on the shoulder, not because I just deliver a good message that inspires people, but I actually equip people so that they can sharpen their skill of public speaking. So with that being said, I would say, I would ask yourself, what is your area of expertise? Hmm. What is it that you do uniquely well um, over everyone else? Um, if you're an expert marketer, how are you advancing the field of marketing? What are you doing differently in the space of marketing? Um, if, if you are coming from a, a personal story of abuse, or maybe you're coming from a personal story of overcoming poverty or something like that, what else substantiates your voice to be differentiated from everybody else's? And when you hone in on what that specific thing is that you talk about, me, obviously, I, I made mine about public speaking, right? Um, but even more so, now I hone in on the fact that it's about connection sourced public speaking. So now when people think and they have an event like Margot here, oh, public speaking, we need somebody, we need a communication person. Who do we know? Oh, let's get that girl. What's her name? People don't be knowing how to say my name. I would say, my name is, sounds like a small country somewhere in the world that you never heard of, but my parents were ambitious and I'm very thankful for them. They'd be like, oh, let's go get Shahara. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So first to break into speaking, 
be very specific about what you're speaking about. Because otherwise, you'll find yourself just being another personality. You'll find yourself being just another person that's sis boom ba rah rah rah. And, and you don't want that. You want to be the person that comes top of mind. So identify what your specific message is. And then if you can make it different, if you have a different angle, if you have a different perspective to put on it, that's what's going to make you pop up in someone's head. Um, and, and I would say that's the first step. So if you don't have any speaking gigs right now, then work on that. Figure out what aspect of your expertise um, you feel like you could actually introduce to other people and educate other people and add value to other people upon. Then after that, you better be using that Instagram. You better be going live. You better be posting content because people search on the internet for you. And then of course you can be found organically through that. But then also you have to identify the spaces that you would add value to. If there's events, conferences, panels, podcasts, that have audiences that would benefit from your message, then you have to find out who are the decision makers. And then you have to speak to the decision makers so that you can show up on those stages. Um, don't expect to just always be invited places. Me, I still ain't always invited to places. I got to ask, closed mouths don't get fed. I wanna be somewhere, I need to ask them, can I show up? Oh, you want me to do this? That ain't what I do, but I can tell you what I do. If you need that, let me do it. So, <laughs> no, see, and then this is, this is so good because you're the, the point of ask, um, the late Dr. Maya Angelou, I will wear this quote on my shirt, not today, but to, I will wear this quote on my shirt, ask for what you want and be prepared to get it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let's not be greedy. So I change wants and need, ask for what you need and be prepared to get it. If you need speaking engagements ask for them, but also let's be strategic, right? Let's, let's put some strategy behind that as well. And so one of the best ways is, you know, when you're making this shift or when you're trying to do something new in the business, um, as the business leader, sometimes we're like, eh, this is new. And I don't know how people are going to react. Yes, normal, but do it anyway. And what I like to tell people is to prepare people before the shift, you don't want to do all this work and then boom, drop it. And they're like, whoa, what just hit me? And they just get whiplash, right? You want to prime them for this shift that's taking place. And so I want to go back to an earlier point when I talked about leveraging your professional assets. So I talked about your personal experiences, your professional experiences, but another piece is your network. Um, I will not bill you for this later, but when you're, when you're leveraging your professional assets, these are the people who know you. These are the people who you know. These are the people who you need to know. These are the people who need to know you. And so I want to just dive a little bit deeper to be like, okay, well, how do I get to know people who I need to know? And how do I let people who need to know me get become aware of me? Well, great question. Really what it comes to is your network you have first, second, and third degree connections. Tell people, say, hey, Summer, you know, um, I know I've been in leadership development for so long, still staying there, but years ago, I actually went on this 23 city tour and I wrote this book called Seasons of Life. And I really feel like I'm called to bring this back to the forefront. So do you have any connections? Um, you know, here's a little bit more about this topic. And, you know, do you have any connections for who would benefit from this topic? No, Margo, I don't. Okay, great, moving on. And I'm gonna ask other people. But if she says, you know what? I have a, a connection with a, a college or I have a connection with a jail or I have a connection with this. And that story about overcoming ACES is going to be so good for these people. I'll be back one moment. And because I took the time to share, it's not public on social media yet, but because I took the time to share with my first, second degree connections, 
they are now going to lobby on my behalf because they know the value and the quality that I bring to the table. And so I wanted to also share that as well as you're trying to figure out, okay, what does this look like for me? If you've been doing it, great, keep doing it, apply a little bit more pressure and a little bit more strategy. But then if you're new to this, if this is gonna be groundbreaking for you, definitely put together a list of people that you can begin to say, hey, I'm gonna be speaking on X topic and reference the chat because I broke down what your heart was talking about, about what is your expertise? Being very clear on that leadership development, but what does that mean? I can break that down, right? But then also what, how, how does your, how is your voice differentiated over other people? As a leadership development consultant, that's one thing, but I talk about strategic partnerships or strategic collaboration. That sets me apart from my industry. And then this other piece for developing the leader behind the business, that again sets me apart. So I wanted to give those two examples in addition to the example Shahara mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Good stuff. So again, really, really great question. Um, I'm sure your question was answered with a little bit more. Um, but nonetheless, I think that was a really good question is how do we even break into the speaker industry? Again, great question. Um, next question, what are three, <laughs> what are three ways we can sharpen our speaker skills? Ooh, um, I would say that the, the first thing, and I mentioned this earlier and I'm gonna repeat it because I know that you're getting a lot of info going here, but write this down. You know, if you wanna sharpen your skills, um, the first thing is, is to remember that every time you open up your mouth, you're public speaking. Um, don't think that just because you're in a formal space on a stage, have the microphone and finally have the attention of your colleagues that you haven't been public speaking. Uh, there's a shift that happens when you, and when you get on those formal stages and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm on. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm public speaking now. But you were public speaking when you were talking to Sue. You were public speaking when you had to add in your notes in, in the Zoom meeting. You're public speaking when you show up in places like this. Um, when you go to networking events and they ask for people who have questions, you better stand up and ask your question and command that answer. That's public speaking. You're, you're asking a question, but the public is witnessing you and hearing you speak. So the first thing that I would always say is, let change your perspective and start to look at every time you open up your mouth, your public speaking and look at that as practice and not only just look at it as, as practice, but look at it as execution. You out here speaking. Um, <clears throat> the second thing that I would suggest that you do uh, when sharpening your skills is when you feel that moment that this, the floor is open and they're asking people to contribute or they're asking people for questions or they're asking people you know, uh, to share their two cents. And you feel that hesitation where, mm, let me wait and see who else gonna say something. I'm gonna wait and see. Don't wait for everybody else to say something. You say something because that becomes your practice. And obviously if there's a little hesitation before you jump to speak, that means that there's an insecurity that you can overcome. There's a resistance that you can push through. And when you over, there's a fear that may be there. And when you decide, I'm not gonna wait on everybody else. I'm nervous about this, so let me just do it. That's how you're practicing. So when you feel this voice or that feeling inside of you say, mm, I'm thinking I'm gonna just chill. No, don't chill, talk, right? That's another way that you can start sharpening your skills because you're getting practice in. And now you're overcoming that fear. You're, coming that in, you're overcoming that initial resistance. Um, and then the third opportunity to sharpen your skills, and, and I'm just gonna put it out there, you know, when you come to spaces like this, you're working with other professionals who have a bit more experience in certain areas and they're able to offer you perspective, insights, uh, feedback, coaching. 
Um, if you're really in the space where you want to use public speaking as a way as to what I say, grow your public profile or to grow your persona or, you know, to grow who you are as a professional, as to be known by other people. If you're using public speaking in that type of way, then I would suggest don't hesitate getting help. Don't hesitate getting support. If you know that you have a, a great communicator in your, in your office, if you know that you have a family member that's a great speaker, you know, speak to them, ask them for their feedback. Um, and then the next space is hire a coach. We hear about public speaking coaches all the time, but we kind of don't even really know what they do. Like, how does that work? Is it just for presentations? Whatever it may be, start to research someone else that's outside of you to help illum illuminate the blind spots that you have of yourself. There's only so much that you can improve just with self. After a while, you probably need to introduce and invite a new perspective, new insights, new feedbacks, uh, new feedback, because you're not going to see it the same way. So, you know, I forgot what all three points, but Oh, every stage, open up your mouth. Every time you open up your mouth, you're public speaking. The second time is, is when you feel that resistance, when you feel that fear, push through it because that's gonna make you, help you overcome that fear. And then once you get to that point, you're like, okay, I need more. Get a public speaking coach. Get somebody that's gonna help you articulate your thoughts. Again, spot on. So just to recap, even though you recapped, I really want to drive these three points home because someone asked the question. Um, the first, if you want to sharpen your skills, remember that every time you open your mouth, you are public speaking. It doesn't have to be a form formal stage. So that's like just first thing is first. Second, when you feel um, the floor is open to speak or share, don't wait for others. I want to add something for me when I knew it was time for me to share and I want to see the chat go off both on both on both platforms. My palms would start sweating or like my pits would start sweating and I'm like, oh, my heart is now beating. I need to share whatever is on my heart. So take that tip as well. If you've been in that space and then too, I'm, I'm going to, I always, I think I've said this on every segment understand that when you are operating in obedience, when you are doing what you've been placed on this earth or predestined to do, you are helping other people experience their breakthroughs. When you do what you have been placed on this earth to do, you are helping other people experience their breakthroughs. So when you share, chains can be broken. When you don't share, People can remain in bondage. If that applies pressure, good. I want you to feel that. And then number three, number three, when you feel the fear, push through it. And if you're still struggling, hire Shahara. I mean, a coach. There you go. That's the recap of the three. Forty, 40 and slip. <laughs> So again, this is this has been really really good, and I I'm loving the 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 questions that are coming from from our audience because they really want to know, like they really want to learn, <laughs> you know, how to to do this for real, and then also to make a little bit of cash, right? Like I think that's a big thing here. So I want to ask you um, this other question. How long is it, or it, how, how is this question phrased? Um, how long, how, how typical is it before you get paid to speak? I had to rephrase the question, but how typical is it before you expect, there we go, expect to start getting paid speaking engagements? I think that's a good question. It, it's, it's all about you. It, it's, it's the decision that you make to say yes or to say no. And, but you have to also accept the, the consequences of maybe saying no, mm -hmm. right? If they're not offering you any money and you only want to, you know, be paid, then you got to say no to that because they're not paying, but you got to be okay with the fact that you may not speak. And that's okay because your priority is to become a paid speaker. Um, I just got... 
My aunt referred me to um, the National Association of uh, Blacks in Higher Education or something like that, right? He yeah. referred me and they want me to do a 50 minute uh, workshop. And, uh, and then in the email, I, I'm just putting them out there. And then in the email, they said, and we're, 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 we're requesting that if you decide to speak, we're requesting that you um, pay the uh, discounted speaker registration fee. I was like, so not only do you want me to do a 50 minute workshop, but you want me to pay for the registration too? You can't let a sister slide for serving your community? You want me to pay for the registration? Really? So I, I went and I went and prayed and meditated. If it wasn't for my auntie, I probably would have said no. Um, but I, I would have been like, oh, you know what? No, thank you. No, thank you. Um, and then I would have also said, I'm offering you and I'm serving your audience for a 50 minute workshop. I believe that it would be in good grace to extend a, uh, you know, a courtesy registration for my services in exchange for serving and adding value to your audience. Moving forward, I would suggest if you want to retain high-end clientele and you also want to serve your community with people who have something to offer, uh, you may want to at least say that you don't have to pay for registration. However, I made a choice. I'm gonna pay a little funky $40. And I'm coming to peace with the fact that here's my opportunity to serve. I got time, I got capacity. I don't have anything on my calendar that day. Um, but when I do commit to that, I will let them know that this is not only a pro bono experience, but I'm paying to be here. So if another opportunity that comes along that pays me you know, six times the amount, then I will do my best to give you at least a week notice. But after a week, if I don't get booked for anything, then uh, I'll stick and I'll commit to it because I ain't gonna miss out on no money. However, I made a decision and I'm gonna pay the registration fee and I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna serve and I'm gonna ask God to open my heart, to bring peace to me and, and, you know, and, just, and, and just serve and just serve. But you have to make a decision. So it doesn't have to be very long before you're paid for something. It could be a matter of just saying no to opportunities that aren't paying you and then yes to the opportunities that are. Um, it's, it's difficult to put a time period as to how long it takes in order to be paid regularly um, mm -hmm. because I've been at this for quite some time and I'm just now moving into a space where I'm consistently getting paid for things. Yeah. And based off of this example, I ain't even gonna lie to you. Sometimes I'm paying to speak. Yeah. And it ain't by choice. However, I have the capacity and God put it on my heart to serve. So at the end of the day, I just say, let me serve. And if I get the opportunity to serve, I have to remind myself that. But there will come a time and that time is quickly approaching where I will not have the capacity to do you know, pro bono type work. Um, and I think that that's the barometer that I've set for myself. And the only way that I'm just really gonna turn down an opportunity is um, if I just don't have the capacity. Um, and right now I got time. So I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna serve. Again, what you just shared and we love them, but we have to be transparent about these stories. And here's why. Um, number one, when you're in experiences like this, not if, but when, when you are in experiences such as this, you need to know how to respond, right? Um, so a few things that I'm taking away from what you shared, and I've been there a plethora of times. Um, the first is be okay with saying no. So that's that's the first thing that I that I'm that I'm taking away from this statement, right? If it does not serve you, or if you don't have the capacity, you can say no and be okay with that. The second thing is make sure that you are also um, setting and maintaining your boundaries. And I call it setting and maintaining your professional boundaries. Um, and what that really looks like is what you, what you said. And really, this is what I want everybody um, who's tuning in and listening to this episode to take away. When you get a request like this saying, hey, we want you for X amount of time to give your services, literally give, to give your services, and you're going to do this too, 
be willing to step up and say, hey, normally my speaker rate for a 50 minute, 30 minute, 10 minute, 15 minute talk is X. Whether it's $50, hopefully you're not trying to $50, but whether it's $50, $500, $5,000, or $15,000, or even $50,000, say, this is my normal speaker fee for X. And so as response, this is what I want us to agree to. This is what I would like to negotiate if I'm going to accept this speaker engagement. Some people say, oh, nope. And other people, oh, yes. And so just to share a few of those um, things that I ask, because um, I do take free stages or pro bono stages or complimentary stages, whatever you want to call them, pay to play stages even. I've taken those stages as well. And a few things that I ask for in advance um, before like the contract is signed, number one, um, I ask for um, the footage. I ask for the photography um, from the day of the experience. And I make sure that I'm, I'm looking real good in those photos, crisp and clean, okay? So that's number one, because you can begin to then use that for additional marketing. Um, number two, I also ask for referrals with my actual fee, you know, and I actually tell them like, you can't tell them that I did this for you for free. If I choose to do it for them for free, that's between me and them. And I'm going to set up the same or a similar negotiation. But oftentimes I get a yes. Another is asking for the registration list say, okay, if I'm going to speak for free, please hand me all 250 women or not women, but emails um, of your attendees who are going to be in the room. Okay. That's when I'm going to speak for free. So again, you can figure out what makes sense for you. Um, and, and I just wanted to add those things in there because again, you're going here and you're sharing your expertise. You want to make sure, again, it's not about being greedy. This is a business. You are running a speaker business. And so I want to, to like I said, share those examples, um, adding to what Shahara was saying. And I feel that that is a really great um, segue um, to the next part of this, which is what are the different ways to get paid through speaking? And so Shahar, I'm going to alley it to you in a moment because um, I kind of was already sharing that. If you have a paid engagement, if you have a pro bono engagement, I want you to talk about selling from the back of the room because this, this, all of this may be new to some people. So I want to alley it to you at this point, but what are the different ways to get paid at a speaking event? Yeah, and, and you know, Margo, you may actually have more experience with this because I, I am a public speaking coach. I am not necessarily paid to just speak. I get paid to teach. I lead workshops. I facilitate. So I, I always sometimes have to make that, I have to differentiate. Like I am not a, I'm not a Lisa Nichols who's just getting invited by these companies to give 30 minute keynotes. That is not, that's not where I'm, that's not where I'm at. Um, I've always been in the training, coaching and teaching space. So the ways in which I get paid is through the actual, like I'm teaching, I'm, I'm actually teaching. So the back of the room, having book, having merchandise, having things like that, I don't, I don't really have that. Um, I'm paid for the, the time, I'm paid for the value, I'm paid for the presentation, I'm paid for the training, you know, and that's all negotiated up front. So I don't necessarily have to do the, the additional revenue streams. Um, I have an eight week group coaching program where I work with business and thought leaders who are using public speaking to grow their public profile. So if you yourself want to perform and connect better with your audiences through panels, podcasts, conferences, and keynotes, I teach you, I equip you with uh, better speaking skills so that you can shine on those stages and so that you don't feel small after you walk away from those stages. So that's my additional stream of, of income, not because I'm just speaking, but because I'm teaching you how to be a better speaker. I am, I'm a speaker, obviously I'm here, but 
my I'm rooted in the space of serving people who are who are looking to be better speakers, who are looking to connect, who are looking to really just feel better about themselves. People just like, I want to feel more confident, right? So I'm you work with me in my eight week group coaching program. Uh, you know, we had uh, who do we have? Uh, Tanika. As you saw, I was brought on by another organization to coach and train. Um, you know, so that's the ways in which I get paid. I am not, and I'm just going to be straight up with everybody. I'm, I'm not getting tapped on the shoulder six or seven times out of the week to be a keynote. You're not going to follow me on Instagram and constantly see my next little flyer for, oh, I'm going to be speaking at this conference. And I'm going to speak at this conference. I'm going to be speaking at this conference. I mean, they're, they're, it's kind of there and it's growing, but I'm rooted in the space of teaching. I'm rooted in the space, like that's where my, that's where my background comes from. So I will toss it back over to, you know, Margo when it comes to like, how do you get paid as a speaker? Me, I get paid because I teach speaking, not because I'm just standing on stage delivering a motivational message. I'm not a motivational speaker. I may so, motivate you, but I'm not, <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't my lane. So for the record, and this is why I wanted to alley it to you prior to me going and walking out this, this list, because it's different for us. We are both speakers. You can see, I don't know if you paid attention in the background, but you can see one of my assets in the back. It's a book. I have nine books. So when I take a stage, that may be one of my additional ways to get paid to speak. Now, regardless of whether you have books or no, you can sell your offer from the stage. If it is an eight week speaker program or eight week program, six month program, 12 month group program, I'm mastermind, that is your offer, right? So I can go and say, let me, I'm, I'm gonna piece this together to make it all make sense. Um, so I used a couple examples earlier and I mentioned going, having gone on a 23 city tour. That was a real story actually. Um, and I wrote this book called Seasons of Life. And so that book is geared toward a specific group or specific groups of people. And so I would pitch or be invited to share that message. And what I would say is, okay, hey, well, you know, here's the speaker fee and that includes 20 books, 50 books, 100 books, the fees exchanged, deposit or in full. And then I bring the books or ship the books to them. I come and do the presentation or now in the world of COVID, we do it virtually. And, and there you have it, close the book, get a referral, get testimonials. That's the additional way to get paid. Um, back of the room sales is what it's normally called when you're in an actual speaker room or um, an event room. So that's one way. And then again, I would do some variation of that with my other assets, with my other books. And like going back to it, this is why I want to alley it to you because I don't always pitch my event or not my event, my, my, my offer, my program to the audience if it's not fitting for that audience. But again, it depends on where you're showing up, why you're there and what topic you're focusing on in, in, in that time. And so again, hearing your experience, which you could be or would be selling from that stage is to get into your program, mm -hmm. regardless yeah. of whether you have a book or no. Yeah, yeah, no. And I think that those are all e extensions of it, you know, yeah. um, and, and again, this is kind of, you know, new information to me, you know, like, like I said, I've, I've been in the corporate space, and I've just recently moved into the consumer space. So the different the different avenues of, of developing and creating yeah. revenue is, is something that I'm exploring for myself as well. Um, but I, I do have events, I do have workshops, and but it's all rooted in the space of me giving yes. you the value. Now, not to say that Motivational speakers don't give value. Not to say that if you're invited for a keynote, you're not giving value. But my, I'm a classroom. You know, I am a certification. Yeah. I am, a, I am the university. Um, she is. She and, is. You know, so you come to get educated, and I happen to teach you on how to be an effective speaker. And so again, I think this is really good because we're able to show them a few different ways on not just looking for that paid engagement. Because let's be clear, I want to go back to this example of, of the pay to play, right? So now you're going to be in the room of 
Do you have a number? Like how many attendees do you think? I, you know, I asked them again, this was a referral by my aunt and I asked them and I was just like, whatever, I'm just going to so let, let's just throw out the number hundred. Let's say there's going to be a hundred people in this room. There are other professional leaders in this room and she's going to be able to speak and share. Let's say one to 3% of the people I want her, I want her at my event. I want her at my ERG workshop or whatever the case is. She's going to be able to meet people in this room while she's speaking for free, actually while she paid to speak, right? Let's, let's reemphasize that. Let's drive this point home because she could actually be getting paid more money on the back end of this investment that she made into her speaker career. So again, don't just look at these opportunities as like a, <laughs> how dare you ask me to speak for free, right? Don't look at it like that. You have to evaluate the weight of your of the event you're being requested to, or you're invited to speak. So I did want to add that part there. Um, and then another thing is, again, when you get into this room, you figure out what you want to bring together. And if you don't have a book, honey, there's tons of tutorials at this point where you can throw together a little Canva. You better become a Canva whiz and just throw together some of your top tips in this guidebook. And that's a lead magnet. And if you, if you don't sell it, you can get them onto your email list and then sell them something later. But if you have the capacity to write a book or get a, a asset, a physical asset um, into the table, this one's pretty thick. So you may not want to do that before your next event, but nonetheless, you can get something tangible to get into the hands of the people. And they invest in that, um, into that while they're there. So again, while we're having this conversation, I think it's a really great point um, as we're beginning to land this plane. Um, how do you find paid speaking engagements? Yeah, I, I would. Like that's, yeah, that's a good question. Too. Um, you find them, I honestly, you know, put yourself out there, right? And, and when, I, when I agreed to do this most recent one, uh, it, it was literally at a space of, of serving, right? Yeah. Like, okay, I, I didn't think about the attendance list. I was just like, all right, I'm in it. What God has for me, he's got for me. Um, but I think that it's helpful to follow other people on Instagram who are showing up and speaking at the audiences uh, in, in the spaces that you want to show up in. Um, it's probably also important to follow um, not only just on Instagram, but you know, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. uh, the people who serve audiences similar to yours. Um, because then you'll see the spaces that they're popping up. And then that will start to put on your radar the different types of events that are out there. Um, it's, it is challenging to become a paid speaker just because if nobody knows who you are, then these organizations don't want to pay you. And it's challenging even for people who have a very you know, pronounced or robust pu public profile. Sometimes these organizations still try to get them to do certain things for free. And I, I've seen it happen even within my own network where it's like, dude, they're still not paying. And so it can be challenging. I think the key thing is, is to find the paid gigs is one about research, two about following uh, the people who are out there doing it um, so that you become aware of the pool of opportunities or um, what those opportunities look like, whether they're in the form of conferences or events or panels or podcasts um, and, and finding those. And then third, it is really about building your expertise. It's about building that profile so that when they do land on your, your social or your digital footprint, when they show up and, and, and they research you, they can already tell, oh, she's talking about something that my audience is gonna love. Oh, I love her delivery and I love her style. Okay, yeah, she's a shoe in um, But without that, without looking like you actually have something to offer, without being able to be specific and articulate the value that you add, um, even if you find the opportunities, uh, you may not have the easiest time, you know, finagling your way into it. Um, but the proof is always in the pudding. 
And if you commit to how you show up and serve people, if you're committed to um, mastering your craft and mastering your expertise, and if you're committed to sharing your expertise with people, uh, whether it be paid or unpaid, um, that's always going to attract more opportunities for you. Um, and then you'll also be ready to show up and show out when the stage does meet to greet you. So to answer that question is you just gotta do the research. And I found that it's easy to just follow the people that are doing what you wanna do. Uh, you see them showing up at certain events, then you go and do the research and you find out who's that decision maker. Who's that person I have to submit my resume to? Or who's that person that I have to submit to my speaking reel to? Who's that person that I may, maybe need to network with? Who's that person that knows someone that I know that knows them? So um, it, like I, I have a, a business coach and she says, you know, sales is a contact sport and that contact is Yay. through conversations. So you got to have conversations. You've got to spark these conversations. You got to get nosy. So the people that you follow say, hey, I love that event. Would you mind sharing your contact? I would love to maybe pitch myself for their next conference. Yes. And again, spot on, it goes back to what I mentioned earlier about ask for what you want and be prepared to get it, right? Um, a lot of these, these the, the organizers, they really don't necessarily want to do all the work. They'll do the work, but they don't want to do all the work. So if you're like, I got a quote for this article or, hey, I want to speak at this stage, they're, they're going to definitely do their due diligence or they should. But at the same time, you've now put yourself on their radar you're a better can or more likely candidate than the person who was like, man, I would love to speak that event. They don't reach out and they don't submit. Like, let's be clear. Even if you get a no, that means next opportunity or new opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. So understand that I, I, you said something and I was like, oh my goodness, that reminds me of something I teach my clients and students. Um, so I want to give this tip as well. I just dropped it in the chat box. Um, be willing to connect with people in your own industry. So Shahar was talking about, you know, start following people on, so on, on LinkedIn, on um, Instagram, Facebook of, of other speakers, if you will, or other subject experts who are having engagements where you want to begin speaking. And so again, connect with them and feel free to ask them too. Like, hey, um, I saw that you spoke at this event. That's on my vision board if you have one. And you know, would you mind sharing how you guys started? Some people are gonna be stingy and be like, girl, no. And then other people are gonna be like, oh my goodness, yes. You know, I talked to, you know, the senior director at XYZ. They may not give you the name and phone number because you do have to do some work, but at the same time, you may have, you, 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 by asking, you're going to get further than sitting there wondering what next step to take. Mm -hmm. um, and be willing to say like, Hey, this is, this is new for me. And I'm looking for how to get, you know, how to get started and get my feet well in the industry. Like, is there anything that you can share rather than just go in and say, Hey, Shahari, give me your contact for your business coach. And I want that speaking engagement. Like, or who no like it doesn't it doesn't work like that so definitely be willing to give as you're asking as well um and then the other side of that with you know connecting um with people in your industry essentially it's the heart of of, of what i teach around strategic collaboration and partnerships is know that collaboration will take you further than competition I actually used to have a roster of people saying, hey, just in case some crazy emergency comes up and I can't speak or I get booked multiple times, I had a roster of other speakers who were in my industry that could stand in my place. And then when I realized like, oh shoot, I think I'm the only one doing this. I started asking other people like, hey, I know you're speaking at this event. If anything happens, not wishing it, love you. But if anything happens, call me and I'll stand in. And because you threw it to me, if it's a paid engagement, I'll still throw you a cut because you, you could have not done it. And so that served me really well, um, probably for the two years where I was really focused heavily on speaking. So just another little tidbit. Um, so we are landing this plane. We made it 90 minutes. You stuck here strong. <laughs> And I'm so proud of every single one of you uh, because you did it. And there was a lot to unpack here. Um, you will be able to find the replay over on Facebook at a.margoblair or 
on YouTube at a.margoblair. Um, and we're gonna be sending that out to all the attendees anyway, so you'll have that. But at the same time, um, I want us to go ahead, Shahara, Summer, it, as we just wrap up this last minute, what is one or two, let's do one. What is one major takeaway that we can give to the audience? I think the major takeaway is um, become more aware as to how willing you are to show yourself to people. Um, how are you facilitating, cultivating, and creating connection? Like truly connecting. Sometimes we live in the past, sometimes we're far off into the future, but where you are on a day-to-day -day basis is an opportunity to really be present and to really show yourself and reveal yourself to the people around you. And that's gonna communicate vulnerability, that's gonna communicate authenticity, and that's also gonna foster um, more genuine connection. So sh really ask yourself, how willing am I to be connected with the people around me? And I encourage you all to truly connect People need it. We are, we are beings that need community. We are beings that need people around us. So um, challenge yourself to connect. That's the one, one thing I would tell you. I love that so, so much. Summer, how about you? One final nugget for the audience. You know, you guys said a lot of stuff during this talk and it was, it was huge. And speakers, speakers are not always given, um, the value they are worth, I will say that. Um, however, when you understand your value and you understand how to show up, um, even if you're not getting paid for an event, you're always being watched. And if you're always being watched and people will research your information while you're in the room, like, like don't take any any platform, whether you're just attending an event or speaking at an event or hosting or walking through the airport. I mean, people are watching you at all times. And several times uh, people come up to me and say, hey, aren't you, aren't you summer? Weren't you here? Weren't you there? I'm like, oh my gosh, you actually, like once you're out of that arena and people notice who you are, then you feel like, oh, this is my personal space, but it's okay. Because as a speaker, you not for, it's not that you have given up your personal space, but you're taking your personal space outside and sharing it with the world. And the world wants to know who you are. So give them the pieces that you want to share with them. Like what Shahara said, do, do the social media part. That's humongous because even as a corporate sponsor, oh, and another way of getting paid is by it's getting sponsorships. Um, just know that and don't don't go after corporate people just for their money want to like build a relationship because we do business with business with people that we like and if we don't like you then we won't do business with you so don't come um, hitting people up for money but anyway um when it comes to no i just lost my train of thought sorry margo you know i used to go on a tangent stop it stop it no you were you were essentially <laughs> just saying um you know the different ways that that you can also get paid but making sure yeah. that you are giving people the piece of what you want to share with them and then building exactly. up an actual relationship yes thank you yeah that relationship piece that everyone keeps saying on this program is is instantly because when margo and i met and and I mean, this is a way of getting paid, you know, um, the way we met, well, we didn't do anything for like a year no. and, and be okay. So what you do right now will, will come to fruition in a year. So if you don't put the work in now, you're not going to get paid 12 months from now. So think of like the things you're doing today will pay you a year from now. If you think of that mentality opposed to, I want everything like right now, like I'm going to talk to you for, you know, a holiday event, like no, my budget was planned in October of last year for the holiday event this year. So why in the world would I get? No. So just understand the ebbs and flows of the organizations you want to work with so that you can contour or customize your approach in, in that way. So if you might not get paid for a year, it's okay. Work your other job or do whatever you have to do so that you can con continue this and, and actually build upon that. So I'm sorry. I just want to tangent. Hopefully you got something out of what I just said. 
Uh, <laughs> you know, you are so good. And I summarized that into, into the chat, because again, like what you're saying is so rich and it goes back to everything that we talked about today. And because we couldn't necessarily have you all here, then this, that was your time. Like, so that was good. Um, again, just being able to add that additional value, right? Because what we're talking about here today for our conversation of the, the mic drop moments, the art of public speaking, it's so much bigger than just trying to get your gig. You are a person behind this business. And so we're, we were giving you um, some leadership tips, some mindset shifts, you know, ways to dismantle belief blockers that have been standing in your way of even getting yourself out there, let alone getting paid. But then also we de delve deeper into um, the art, the strategy and the business behind speaking. And so before I give my final point, Shahara, is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience? Yeah, I, I just want all your stuff in the comments, though. Yeah, I, I have a link here, and I, I have an opportunity. Uh, I know that there's also spaces where negative self-talk become the thing that holds you back from maybe speaking up, sharing, uh, and showing up. On October 25th, I am hosting a Build Your Mantra public speaking workshop. Um, and whenever I host these workshops, it's there to equip you with not only mantras that help you, but it's also mantras that give you the content, give you the subject matter so that you can speak extemporaneously in these live experiences, these live engagements that you have. So this is happening October 25th, Building Your Mantra. Um, and again, this is all about combating and replacing the negative self-talk and how you can show up in conversations, which are your stages. So I, I share that to everyone out there. Margo, I'll also send you the link, uh, but feel free to join me on that October 25th. And so as we come to a close, we just want to thank every single one of you for taking the time to join us today. I know we didn't get the chance to open up at all to the floor, but just letting you know that we are not done yet with this business bootcamp series two. We have two final segments for this series, and we're going to be focusing on developing high performance habits next, um, next month. And then the final month, we're going to be talking about mindset, meditation and manifestation. And I just will have to preface this. It's not all that woo, woo stuff we've been seeing. So just saying, so you definitely want to come back to that. Um, if you know someone who should be a part of these conversations, like be in the room while we're having these conversations, definitely send them over to discoverher.com. Org, and they will be able to find all of the details around the Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp series. Because again, we don't want anybody missing this, but the, the replays will be available. And as a final point, I forgot my nugget, but my major thing that I want you to take away is that you have a message inside of you. Make sure that you take the time to craft what you have been given so that you can really make an imprint in this world. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you, Margo, for having me.